Hey everyone, I'm Robert. And I'm Lisa. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are gonna talk about the things that you need when you buy an RV. So let's get right to it. All right, so when you first get your RV, there are a lot of little things that you're gonna need for, for you know your first time out. And so we are going to cover briefly those things that you need. Now, there are a lot of topics we could do entire videos on, and we will for you guys, but we're just gonna go down a list. Now, we are going to, uh, down there in the description, um, we're gonna put a list of everything that we talk about and links. Um, we find, honestly, that Amazon is the best place to get a lot of this stuff. And so um, we're gonna put links down there for you guys for everything that we talk about. So let's start right away. So we have this broken down into six categories. Towing, leveling, power, water, sewer, and storage. All right, the first thing and probably the single most expensive purchase is gonna be your hitch. Now look, you're about to drive down the street with a big box behind you. You want a sway control and weight distribution hitch. Um, we have found that the one, it's called Equalizer, is the best. Now it's around 650 bucks, um, but it's absolutely a must to get a weight distribution and sway control hitch. Now before you can take the trailer off the truck, you need to put some wheel chocks in. Um, and so if you have a tandem axle, you're gonna want uh, four chocks. We put uh, one for the back tire and one in the inside for the front tire. There's also another device made that you can put in between the two tires to help secure them, but I've always found that just the simple chocks works pretty good for us. Now, next are leveling blocks. When you go to a can type, now we happen to be on a pretty level surface and it's concrete, so we don't need leveling blocks, but there's a lot of times when you're in the dirt or the grass and it's not quite level and you're gonna need a set of leveling blocks. Um, and there's several different types and ways to go about this. Um, there's a very inexpensive way, which is simply just buying a two by eight and cutting it into blocks. Now, just like your tires, when you crank your jacks down, you're gonna need a block for the bottom. Now. We choose to use wood for our, our stabilization jacks. And if I was in the grass, I have a set of the, the blocks for my tires. All right, your hitch lock. Now, when you're towing this down the road, you would have this in place to keep the trailer from bouncing off the ball. Once you've detached it, I always put it back in there to keep this secure from having people back up and, well, steal your trailer. Now, there are all different kinds of these things. There's these big contraptions and everything. We have found this to be simple and work for us because everywhere we go has been pretty great. But if you want to be more secure, there are these big, huge contraptions you can put in here. I have one, I just never use it anymore. And they range anywhere between 50 to $250. The trailer is off your truck, you have your wheel chocks in place, it, you have your level blocks in, but it's time to actually really level the RV out with your jacks. Well, you need a level to figure out what level is. And so there are kinds that you can stick on the side of your RV. I have pictures of them right up there. I, I think they're like seven bucks very inexpensive. You just stick them on, they're on there permanently. Or you can just buy like a little torpedo level. Um, that's what we use. We find that to be the easiest for us. Uh, we just stick it right here uh, on the A-frame of the, of the trailer so to see if we're level front to back. So when we're going up and down on our jack, that lets us know if we're level front to back. And then I put it inside here. Um, it's hard to see because I've got my bins in there now, but I just laid inside there because it's flat and it let me know if I'm level left to right. But you need a level to figure out if you're level. Now let's talk power. Depending on your unit, you're either gonna have a 50 amp uh, connection or a 30 amp connection. Now your RV will come with a cable, but there are many times when it's not long enough, okay? So if you're going places where you need to plug in and you feel you need more, you're going to need an extension for that. This has happened to us maybe 15%, maybe 20% of the time. So again, if you have a 50 amp uh, uh, connection, then you're gonna need a 50 amp extension. Again, we have some links below. Or if it's 30 amp, you have a 30 amp connection. All right, now I don't have this plugged in right now, but this is a surge protector. Um, this is something you're really gonna wanna have plugged in. Um, this is actually my old 30 amp one. 
that's why it's not plugged in because we now have a 50 amp one. I just ordered a new one um, and so I don't have my surge protector. Uh, but this is going to save from any power surges. Right? Think about your regular home. You have your TVs, your electronics, they're all typically plugged into some type of surge protector. You need to do the same thing with your RV. So let's say you pull up to a, an RV place and they only have 30 amp connections but you have a 50 amp uh, connection yourself. You're going to need an adapter to go from your 50 amp to the 30 amp plug. So make sure you pick yourself up an adapter from 30 uh, or from 50 down to 30. All right, it's time to talk about water. The very first thing you need to come out is a water regulator. Now there's basically two types you can get. This one is a, a 40 to 50 amp rated. It does it all on its own. I've been using these since I've had RVs now for 10 years. Absolutely love it, have never had a problem. Basically what it's doing is it's controlling the pressure. So if there's any kind of water surges, it's not blowing hoses out in, in your RV. Now, they do sell a nicer one, okay? And again, I have links for the nicer one down there. It's got a, a gauge on it so you can see the actual pressure. You can actually control uh, with a dial the pressure if you wanna up it or make it lower. Um, it's much nicer. It's about twice the price, um, but I have found no problems with this. Now you see I have two hoses connected here. Um, so there's a splitter valve. I always recommend, as soon as you've put in your water regulator, that you do a splitter. And there's a splitter link down below. Now, you notice I had the white hose connected to the other side of my splitter. Now, the reason why we have a splitter is for two things. One, we have a black tank flush. So when we're draining our tanks, I'm able to pump water in through the top of my tank, if you will, that helps flush out all the stuff in the black tank. So this is why I have the white one. It is only for black flush. The other reason why we have the splitter is, well, let's say you wanna wash your RV. You don't wanna turn your water off to the RV. So that's why we have the Y valve and you can use the other hose connection for a separate hose so you can wash the RV. Now let's talk about the actual water hose itself. First and foremost, you have to make sure it's good for drinking water. Not all hoses, you can't just run to Home Depot and buy a hose. They're not made for drinking water. So it has to be for drinking water. So that is first and foremost. Now what we have found, uh, we've been RVing for 10 years. There's basically three types of hoses. You got your cheap ones, you got your middle of the road ones, and you got your nice ones. The cheap ones are the white ones. They're like this right here, okay? Um, the middle of the road, they're blue. They're just like that, but they're a little bit thicker um, and they're typically blue. The third one is what you see down here. This is a flex hose made by Zero G. This is absolutely the best hose. You absolutely want to spend every dollar and get that hose. It is worth it. First of all, it's flexible. So when you're done, when the water's run out of it, it's like this small, okay? You're going to want to get two of them. They sell them in 25 foot lengths. You want to have at least two. So you have 50 foot. All right, it's time to talk about sewer hoses in this whole mess down here, okay? Now, the reason why this looks like it's a little bit of a mess is because we actually have two drain points in our RV. We have one up front and one back here. So that's key to know, do you have one or two? It's gonna determine the amount of hoses you need to have. So for a one hole situation, if you only have one point of draining, you want at least 20 feet of hose. Again, the link is down there. Um, we recommend Rhino. Uh, we don't have Rhino on here right now. All that stuff went with our old RV. We've just ordered a whole bunch of new stuff that's coming. So we'll reshoot when we got our Rhino stuff on here. Um, this was the next best thing up. And so, it, and it came with our RV. So we just used it until we have our Rhino stuff coming. Now, again, if you have two connection points, two uh, separate areas for draining, like back here, I have uh, one port that drains my black tank and my gray tank, and then I have a separate gray tank up in the front of the kitchen. If you have that same situation, you're gonna have to do one of two things. You either buy two sets of hoses, or you have to constantly be moving the hose back and forth for draining. So we have two sets of hoses. Now, since we have two sets of hoses, you need to get this Y. So if you have two drain points in your RV, you're gonna wanna get this Y connection right here. Again, link down in the description. Now lastly, you need something for the hose to sit in. It can't just lay on the ground. And that's what this black thing is here. Again, I, I have a picture so you can see it uh, when it's all collapsed down. But this is gonna support your, your drain tube, but it also gives it pitch. Um, it starts off really tall and eventually gets itself down. 
Uh, I'm in a little bit of a challenging situation right here because our drain is kind of way above the ground. Typically, they're very flat and flush to the ground. See, that is typically what they look like. They're flush to the ground. Last but not least, bins. You're gonna need something to store all this stuff we just told you that you guys need. So we recommend bins. You can get these anywhere, okay? The local Home Depot, Walmart, pretty much anywhere, okay? So I didn't even put a link down in the description. However, some of that has to do with the size opening of your RV. Let me take that from Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi. All right, so as you can see, we got a, a decent size opening right there. Now, now watch this. These bins literally fit in here just perfect. Of course, this one's full, so it's heavy. It's got our backup stuff in it. And it pushes all the way in. And so when we're done, all that stuff I just talked about, all of our hoses, everything goes inside these bins and just goes right inside here like so. And we're ready to go. All right, well, we hope this guide helped you out and figure out all the things that you need when you're getting your first RV. Uh, make yourself a list. Uh, the, the links are down there in the description. Um, just. I know it seems like a lot of stuff, the reality, it's not. If you just think from the back of your truck to the back of the RV, you'll be just fine. All right, good luck, good RVing. Until next time, be safe.